It's time now for the GEICO 15. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to find out how much you could save. Welcome into those of you streaming the action between Michigan State and Michigan. Let's take a look at that box score. Final score, which favored Sparty, 83-67. The story was told in the first five minutes of the second half. The Wolverines failing to come out of the locker room. Michigan State running and gunning up and down the court. Uh, add it all up, 83-67 is your final with Sparty covering the short number at home. Joining us now to break it all down, we say hello to the man, Gary Parrish, co-host of the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Gary sort of told the story there in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Michigan State outscoring Michigan, I believe in the first eight minutes, it, it was uh, something to the effect of 14 to three. Uh, Michigan's offense just unable to come out of the gates there. Also kind of got run and gun off the court. A lot of fast break points for Michigan State in this one. Uh, how did you assess this uh, this this matchup of rivals here in Michigan. Well, what we just watched is what we've been seeing from Michigan all season long. This is a team that was ranked in the top 10 of the preseason AP poll, a team that finished top five and adjusted defensive efficiency last season, was a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, and they just have not been able to guard anybody this season. It's like you're watching a totally different program. And I know a lot of the parts have changed from last season to this season. But the reason Michigan was ranked preseason top 10 uh, was because they were bringing back their best player. They were bringing back important pieces, and they added two five-star prospects. That's usually a recipe for success, but it just hasn't been there for Michigan. You know, this is a team that, again, top five in adjusted defensive efficiency last season, according to Ken Palm. They entered this game in the same category, ranked 62nd, and they just let Michigan State shoot 55% from the field on them. In that league especially, you have got to be able to get stops if you're going to win on the road. And Michigan, all season long, hasn't really been able to stop anybody. All right, it's time now for the GEICO 15 seconds statement, 15 seconds on the clock. Gary, what do we need to know about these two teams moving forward? Well, with Michigan, um, this is pretty troubling stuff. I mean, they are now two and seven in the first two quadrants. They've got a quad three loss as well. At this point, I would have never thought we'd be talking about this in the month of January. I don't see a realistic path uh, to the uh, NCAA tournament for Jawan Howard's program. They're going to go from being a one seed in 2021 to probably being an NIT team in 2022. For Michigan State, um, this is obviously encouraging, and uh, you know, with AJ Hogard getting ten assists, one turnover, Max Christie bouncing back from a, uh, a subpar effort against Illinois. This is a Spartans team that can win the Big Ten. I'm not predicting that they will, but they're good enough to do it. Gary, we appreciate the insight as always. And for more, be sure to download and follow the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Gary Parish, Matt Norlander, having can't miss conversations day after day on the College Hardwood. Join the conversation right now on the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.